one man saying that is fine. If that's if that's your opinion and you're not in it, that's fine. But there is an entire market of millions and millions of people right. that agree that it is a store of value. So, sure. you know, you can think one thing, but there's also a market and markets tend to become efficient over time. We do know that you will always get paid in Hex on a daily basis. And that is truly the miracle that we call Hex because it is trustless interest, trustless yield. Nothing will stop that contract from running. What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Creed of Crypto podcast. We provide immersive, essential, and evergreen strategies for the novice cryptocurrency investor. How you doing? I am one half your host, Broke Boy Crypto. Hope you guys enjoyed the new intro. It's still pretty banging. I will, I must say, after a couple <laughs> of weeks, I very much enjoyed it. I have here with me, as always, my friend and co-host, Crypto Ewok. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff tonight. Um, we've got the, uh, if you saw the thumbnail, um, we got the the Bankless Boys uh on on there how we also have richard hart and uh yeah we're going to talk a little bit tonight about um what is crypto and why don't these influencers seem to understand what it is we're going to talk about a lot of stuff the market is down we've got a lot of uh things that everybody's scared of here happening in march in the greater um macro economy but ewok how are you doing how are you feeling tonight feeling good another wednesday episode what are we doing 43 now seems like 43 yeah yeah that now that is spanning now some people may be like hey big deal uh 43 episodes like uh that's not even a year we've actually been doing the show um yeah. in podcast form for a year and a half it's actually been since september of 2021 so actually when hex was like at its all-time high and uh, Bitcoin was a couple of months away from it before a terrible bear market is when we started this show. So um, if you want to hear yeah. some of the old episodes, you can do that on your favorite podcast platform dating back to then. But yeah, we've been doing this live stream consistently every single Wednesday here, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for, I don't know, a little while now. I forget when we started. Yeah, it's but been it's good. Fun. Having a good time. I think, uh, you know, yeah. growing a nice little audience here. Some regulars popping in every week. And it's been fun. Yeah, had a uh, crypto coffee on last week, which was definitely a great time getting uh, kind of deep into the Hex ecosystem, of course. And um, yeah, we're going to talk about it again tonight, as well as a lot of other cryptocurrency matters. So I guess we should start off just kind of looking at where we are in the market. So yeah, there's some people um, being scaredy cats on Twitter right now. Bitcoin has dipped below 22K in the last couple of hours, about 21.7 right now. ETH just like it has the entire bear market into what I think is now a, a new cycle, holding pretty damn strong in relation to Bitcoin. I mean, just uh, a warrior. 1536 is where ETH sits right now um, over two time. Well, about two, almost two X up on its bear market lows in Christ. I forget when that was July, June, July of uh, 2022. I don't even remember what year it was. Um, Hex has had a major dip or so over the last day, but a kind of normal retracement, kind of what we expected may happen just under six cents right now. I pay, placed a pretty large buy order, large for myself anyway, uh, earlier today. And uh, yeah, the market is down and people are a little bit scared right now. There's been a lot of Fed stuff uh, happening in the last couple of days. Jerome Powell, of course, spoke yesterday. Um, which we're going to get to in a moment. But Ewok, I will start with you. We always kind of start with, um, we haven't done this in a couple of weeks since we had Crypto <clears throat> Coffee on last week. But I will remind everybody, if you are here uh, and enjoy the stream, hit the like, sub to each one of our channels. I'm Broke Boy Crypto. Um, and Ewok, let them know where your YouTube channel is. What is the yep. handle there? Crypto Ewok uh, on Twitter and Crypto Ewok 5555 on YouTube. Yeah, so hit us up, hit the like, we very much appreciate it. And yeah, Ewok, we usually do start off with like where we're both thinking about the market. Obviously, um, you know, for the last few weeks, I, I, well, really, I think since January, I mean, I, I've really had the growing feeling. And now, I mean, I 
don't know that I could really be swayed that the bear market's definitely over. The lows are definitely in. Um, although I think this is, you know, we're already seeing it. It's not like I'm saying anything crazy. I think this could be the last, um, I think this would be the worst month that we see for the rest of this year. Um, because we have a lot of catalysts again with the uh, Fed in the next couple of weeks, which we're going to get to. Um, but I think once we get past there and further into the spring and summer, uh, but it'll be much more blue skies. Uh, not that we're going to any kind of all-time highs in 2023. I certainly don't mean that, but I, I think that we will see some, you know, blow through that 25K mark here eventually and, uh, you know, feeling pretty good about the market. But how about yourself? Um, uh, are, are you still of the opinion that we could see new lows? What, where do you think we're headed here in the short term? I am. I'm still not sold uh, on the... I'm, I'm still not sold that the bear market is over. Um, there's just, you know, every time I think it's starting to turn around, something else changes my mind back to, nope, not yet. So, uh, you know, the latest was all the, the Silk Road coins that were hitting the market today. You know, there's a, a ton of those. Um, I don't know if you saw Richard's post earlier um about all the coins that are still yet to come out and now they're starting to hit the market now they did it in um was it 900 or maybe it was a thousand bitcoin orders today uh but several mm -hmm. hit the market on coinbase so i don't know i, I just there's still i i don't see that sentiment yet um so I hate to be that. I, I'm not a perma bear. I swear, I'm really not. But uh, uh, it's, I don't know. I mean, uh, no, not, normal no, viewers of this program, myself included, might argue otherwise. They but, may, uh, they may. But I, I just I, there, I see a lot of of things that are just, you know, people get a little anxious when they see a turn in the market and and say, "All right, it's over, it's over," and then it's really not. Um, and I, that's just kind of still where I'm at. Are you sure you're not a Reddit soy boy? You're not I'm a not a Reddit. Soy. I don't even go to Reddit. I don't. I don't. You're don't, not ghost posting there. No, nope, I don't. Like I don't you're participate. No. Nope. Okay. No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it, you know, I, 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 I guess what I'll just say. Let's have a little fun with this. Um, you know, when I hear you say that stuff, like, I mean, so Silk Road coins, Mount Gox coins, uh you know, um, GDBC or something like that, which that one I will say that that would intrigue me to hear some news on that a little bit. But uh, sometimes it's just kind of like, um, I don't know. I mean, are we just like naming things to guess what might be a catalyst for the new way down? I mean, like, because that stuff, you know, could happen. It may happen. But if there's more buyers at these prices now and people are just feeling better about it, um, you know, I don't know that it's really going to matter, like regardless of uh, how impactful the story sounds. It's just I don't know. I just it all just sounds not necessarily the specifics that you're mentioning. But when I hear some of these horror, like people are talking about this, I know you don't care about this, but this Silvergate thing right now, nobody cares about Silvergate. Like, I mean, it's over. It's priced right. in. Um, and it's just kind of like uh no, the market's just not reacting to these pieces of news. And I understand, like, sometimes just the mathematical equation of the selling off of coins is different from somebody's reaction to a story. But I think we have, like, the retail, whoever is in the market right now, nobody's really reacting to the links that they were towards the end of 2022, like, specifically November. It's just gotten better since then and we've had a nice leg up but uh yeah i don't know I, I i i could certainly see and i do think we already are i think in the short term we we could definitely go lower um we're going to get into this but we have the cpi reading next week on the 14th and then the following week on the 22nd we have the fomc reading where we think we're going to get at now a 50 point rate hike again um yeah there's things coming that i could see some more downside in the short term maybe even a loss of 20k temporarily right. but that's that's about as bad as I see it. Um, so, 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 I mean, you, you, <clears throat> are you are you thinking a scenario where like we touch the previous lows and hit yeah. back up, or are you? What are you uh, well, I think we at least go there. Uh, we'll see if it holds. Um, you know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna share this tab here because uh, can I zoom in on this a little bit? Maybe. Oops. Maybe a little too much. Is this going to be what? Oh, okay, you got it. Okay. Let's so um, it said 49,000 Bitcoin from Silk Road Hacker got sent to Coinbase six hours ago. Um, and there are 69,000 of them. And then Richard said, oops, only 9,800. 
So today's action was only 9,800 and they did it in 1,000 order, uh, 1,000 Bitcoin order buys or sells anyway. So only 9,000 took it down to, you know, the 20, 21,000 level today. And there's still so between 49 and 69. Uh, huh? So, so it only took the Bitcoin price down like $300. I mean, it was, uh, it was over, we were at like 22K over... for most of the day. Uh, I mean, we were at 22K the last few days. Okay. All right. Well, okay. So you're anyway, wrong. No, well, I'm kind of, I mean. maybe so, but that, you know, there's a lot more dumping to happen. Yeah. Um, I, whether these Mt. Gox coins come out, we don't know. The Bitfinex, Bitfinex hacker has 119,000. Um, and, you know, there's, the other coins from GBTC that we just don't know what are going to happen. I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm telling you, I, I just, I'm not sold yet. Well, if you want to, um, you know, have, but yes, have a I am time. thinking, I am thinking we're going to get back and touch that 15, that 15,000 mark. Okay. Well, All right. Well, either way, uh, it's not 10 K and it's not 12 K. So, um, yeah. you know, we, 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 we both, and I will say that we were both thinking yeah, we that were. for, uh, for a long time. Um, but just for me, like the thing that I've been saying now for a while, it's more so the time. I just feel like we, we've got to be out of this four year cycle at this point, And it just seems like we're in a new cycle now. You know, I, I just, you know, I, I think that if we were going to hit new lows, I, I just really, I mean, maybe it's nonsensical. I don't know why, but it's the, the four year cycle seems to be extremely reliable, like clockwork right now. Yep. But you again, know. this cycle has never seen, um, a macro environment like we're in. Um, and I, you know, I hear more and more people say, no, we're not gonna, even going to go 25 basis points on the next one. We could probably go 50, by the way he was talking the other day. Well, that's what I think that is the probable thing. Actually. So, you know, that's that's not, that's bearish too. So there's just a lot of things that are mounting, I, I think, um, until we can actually close it out. May, um, March, April. Um, May, hopefully we see something. I think it will happen by May and then get the things turned around. Yeah. Yeah. I could, um, I could see that. And we're going to get into that because and I'll pull up the FOMC schedule because I do believe the next meeting is in May, mm -hmm. um, that we've talked about before, but yeah. Um, I'm just in the mode of like, I, I, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, I, I have been since November, basically like DCAing at a much higher level, as if like, you know, th this has been the end, like, yeah. you know, um, and well, we'll, we'll save some of it just in case it's not, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> now I just, if anybody out there wants to just, uh, cover your eyes and ears like me and, uh, we're in a bull market now, um, go ahead and do that. If you want to be like Ewok and, you know, look at every single storyline that comes up and thinks that we're hitting the new lows, go ahead and do that. You know, whatever floats your boat. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, just having fun, but yeah, good thing I, we're not financial advisors, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Yes. Right. Um, but this is an interesting month and I, it's no surprise we're seeing volatility right now. It's no surprise that we're seeing downside. Let's examine before we get into like, you know, expectations about CPI and FOMC and the next couple of weeks, what we did hear from Powell the last couple of days, specifically his sparring match with, um, Pocahontas. Well, yeah, I, so we've been demonetized 12 and a half minutes into the video. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, with uh, Elizabeth Warren, um, who just never ceases to amaze in the, uh, you know, um, manufactured indignation acting. Um, but yeah, so what are your thoughts on some of the things that he said? Because I think you're right. I think he gave a lot of indication that like... Um, you know, it didn't sound great. It didn't no. sound terrible either, but it didn't, it didn't sound fantastic. And I think you're right that 50 basis points might be the way that they do go next time. But I'm more concerned with like, how much longer is this going to last? Like, will they do it again in May? Because we were thinking before that maybe this would be the last one. Now I'm not so yeah. sure. But yeah. what, what was your kind of impression about a lot of stuff that Jerome Powell said? Well, so first of all, I, I think a lot of this is theater. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I really do. I, I think, you know, if I were him, I would have said, well, listen, if you guys stop spending money, we wouldn't be in this problem. Um, and easy as that, or, you know, then all these senators say, well, we just get rid of you guys. Cause they, they could do that too. So it, it's funny how they, you know, spar back and forth with each other and, um, 
but yeah, but based on on you know what he was saying, um, Jay Powell, uh, I think we're going to see another couple uh, rate hikes. I really do. Um, at least two. Hmm. We originally, like you said, thought that they would stop by that May meeting. Um, not so sure now, by the way he was talking, that we're just not where we need to be. Um, and I, I can see 50 and then maybe 25 and then be done or 50-50 be done if they get, you know, uh, close to the the numbers of turnaround that they're looking for, but you know, it, it, again, it, it's such a drawn out process that um, all these things take so long to pan out for for things to actually uh, fruit come to fruition. You know, what the yeah. what what their their hikes do uh, can take months, sometimes you know, several quarters uh, to to pan out. So I, I just I I don't know. I see probably 50 points this time and and maybe 50 points the next time uh, that's wishful thinking um and then if they're done by then um you know we move on from there well here's the way this lines up so um march 21st and 22nd the 22nd is when we hear what this next rate hike is that i don't know you know and you're right like if it is 50 basis points uh, with the fact that they only went 25 the last time in january yeah that pretty much no way to argue that that's not bearish you know that said if the market decides to get that into its consciousness leading up to that it may not be as terrible as we may be thinking here right now i mean if we get to that point and like 80 percent of people according to polling are expecting it you know we may not see that much more downside well right. see. i do I, I think we're gonna see volatility either way yeah. i do think we could see some more downside for sure um but the thing I find interesting looking at this, so to the start of 2023 with these FOMC meetings have actually been sparse as far as the volume of them. The first one was the end of January. Now we're going to have one almost the end of March. But now the frequency picks up a little bit. So now we're going to have, um, you know, Powell right now, he's forecasting out eight weeks at, at some times. But in May, it's May 2nd and 3rd. So now we're only at about a five week, uh, five to six week um, gap in between. Then we go right into June and it's about another five weeks. So um, yeah, it's, we went from almost an eight week gap in between to like a little over a month. So they're going to have, I think a lot more clarity as we go into each one of the next ones. Um, that's why it's been kind of hard to say when we were forecasting what would happen in March back in January, what the hell was going to happen because it was right. still so far away. So um, now that we're this close, I agree with you. I do think 50 is probably what we're going to see, but May is still too far off, I think. So it's it's hard to say. But yeah, sitting here right now, I could see, I think I could probably see one more of just about 25 then and then they're done. Um and I feel like that's probably the worst case scenario, honestly. Like I don't, or maybe two fifties, like you said, Ewok. I, I mean, think that's think a, be any worse. Well, no, as of right now, I think that's a, a worst case. But again, it takes a while for things to play out. So you know, if they don't get the results that they're looking for by then, who's to say we don't have a third fifty point and then be done? You know, mm -hmm. it, it's just really hard to say, and it's really just all speculation at this point. Um, you know, unless you're in those back rooms, it's it's really right. hard to say. Yeah, definitely. What did you make? <clears throat> um, we'll just entertain this real quick. What and I know we both watched a stream of it, but what did you make um with the specifics of what Elizabeth Warren was saying to Powell? Just the like and I agree with you that it's an act and a dog and pony show entirely, yeah. more so on her part, obviously, than Powell. But yeah, what did you make of that interaction and what do you think is really going on? Well, you know, she says about the jobs, I think that was what she kind of focused mostly on is, so you're telling me that, you know, how many millions of people are going to be out of work? And I'm surprised you didn't just say, well, yeah, that's that's about what's going to happen. But, right. you know, two million people, was it two million? I forget two million. the number. Yeah. That's really. So nobody. In like the grand Arnado. scheme of things, that's <laughs> not that many people. No. Um, and there are still jobs out there. It doesn't mean there aren't jobs available. Um, it's just some of the sectors will be, you know, laying off, which uh, it, who, it, who knows which sectors those will be. But yeah, 2 million people is really not that many people. 
uh, to get the the rate of uh, of where they kind of need to be for this to even out. So. Right. Well, you know, and 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 she's got to saying that number to her constituents, like the people that believe the type of things that she says. Right. They they think that that's a big number, and they don't you know largely understand economics or anything like that. But to a bigger point, the idea that she and her cohorts didn't create the situation that we're in. And as if Powell, you know, I'm not sitting here to defend Jerome Powell all night, but like as if he created the issue and now (laughs) has to get them out of it, you know, when she, she, I mean, she would be printing money until the cows come home. Well, they're passing bills left and right to spend all this money. They want to bail people out of college. They want to spend um, all this extra money on these different funds. And, you know, (sighs) I get it. Some money does need to be spent, but that's why we're in this predicament to begin with. So, you know, there was another comment made today where um, he said, and maybe this was from yesterday and I just didn't catch it, but uh, that the CBDCs would be introduced probably within a year uh, Mm -hmm. because he mentioned something about having uh, digital payments, instant digital payments within a year. So that's something else we need to, you know, really keep an eye on too. Yeah, I saw an account that uh, is typically pretty spammy with info, but I, I, I maybe it was truthful. Maybe you saw more than I did, Ewok. But Powell said something. It was asked like, um, what would what do we do to the crypto market? And said something about sending it to zero or right. something. I don't know if this was a made up tweet or not, but. Um, yeah, I, I it just was kind of laughable to me. I mean, like not, the way not gonna happen. No, I mean the way that those are going to be set up, and um, like for example, I think one of the ones that's being created and used in China right now, or the way they're looking at it, the, I, I saw it again. It's always a tweet that I see, and I don't bookmark, and I lost my camera for a minute again. Um, <laughs> get in a second here. Um, you know, it, uh, basically with their CDBC, it was going to be that. Uh, the, the money expired after a certain amount of time. Like if you didn't access it and use it, I'm sure for X, Y, or Z, it would it would expire and you wouldn't have it anymore, which is kind of not great. So um, yeah, I don't I, think I that happens in crypto. I was kind of thinking that was more of like a social, um, uh, basically like a welfare program almost, uh, where if they give Maybe. it to you, you can't save it. <laughs> you they, uh, they want you to use it. I think I, I could be Maybe. wrong with that, but I think it was more of like a um, assistance type program uh, where if they do give you money that you need to spend it or you're you're not deserving of it. If you're saving it, if you're able to save the money and you don't need it, then you stop getting it kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Um Either way, this is going to continue to be a volatile month because of these changes. So keep your eyes peeled. As far as the CPI, I really don't know what to expect. I mean, you know, I I think we'll probably see um, inflation continue to come down slightly. Will it be the exact decimal point that everybody wants to see? I don't know. Last time it missed the mark, but just barely didn't really seem to affect the market that much. I mean, we still had pretty bullish action compared to how things had been anyway. So We'll see where that number comes in. Um, But yeah, what we would say, and again, we're not advising anybody financially, but in terms of where this market could be going this month, I would just say tread lightly as far as some of your DCAs, because, you know, you've seen, I mean, we just, how about last week, Ewok? We didn't bring this up because now we have all this news coming out. But last week, I forget what day it was, BTC just had this ridiculous red candle down. I remember you texted me um, out of nowhere. And, you know, it's very strange. And then we're just kind of having this action slightly more to the downside since then. So we're probably going to see this kind of stuff. I don't know about that red candle again, but we're going to see this kind of stuff the rest of this month, likely. So just be careful with your DCAs. And, um, you know, it's a good time to definitely have that dry powder and be judiciously getting it into the market if that's what your plans are. So um, same to you. Pip, uh, everybody in the chat, hit the like. We very much appreciate it if you are enjoying the stream. Yeah. Um, don't worry, we're going to get away from all of this boring macro <laughs> government talk. And um, before we get into the things that Ewok and I both believe that uh, we want to have in our portfolio, we're going to talk about what we wouldn't want in our portfolio for crypto. And um, 
you know, we've talked about this before, but as we get into 2023 and especially 24, 25, all of our friends that only hit us up when BTC hits new all time highs um, are going to be crawling back into the market and, you know, buying stupid stuff at the top. Let's identify some of that stupid stuff for them right now so they can from the future. Hi, guys, come back here and watch this stream and we can laugh at you and say this is what you should have listened to back in March of 2023. Um, because I can identify all of these things right now. Like it's so clear to me and I want to get your take as well, Ewok. And I, I know, you know, you being just primarily a complete hexagon, I don't know what all you see in the rest of the market, but I like to also keep tabs on some of this other garbage just so I know what's going on. But what do you think, um, other than the obvious ideas, like, you know, staking on exchanges, leaving crypto on exchanges, all, all the typical things that people need to avoid, Right now, we're already seeing these big influencers like, um, you know, I'm not going to name names. Just go to the biggest crypto YouTube channels that have like literally millions of subs. OK, you're going to see all of the big time money VC backed, boring, redundant projects, layer ones, layer twos, blah, blah, blah. The same tired thing that you've been hearing Man, since last DeFi summer, basically, you know, in like 2020, uh, 2020, uh, maybe 2021 at some point, you're, you're just going to hear more of this stuff now. We have Aptos launching, which, you know, I don't know, Solana 2.0, I think it actually works is the difference. Um, <laughs> you, you know, Optimism is a layer two. Arbitrum is the huge layer two that everybody's like absolutely obsessed with right now and all these airdrops and everything. To me, that's the stuff that I don't really want anything to do with. Like... Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, like you will get X's from it. You will make money. You could make money from it. Like, I mean, Aptos has already had got, done like a 3X, you know, or something. And of course, crash back down. But, yeah. these but at what could... risk? At what risk, though? You know, that's exactly. the problem. Yeah. So I'll let you hit that part up for me. Yeah. Why do you think there's increased risk with stuff like that? Well, it's unproven. Uh, we don't know. I, I don't know much about it. So I really it's not fair of me to say, you know, stay away from it because um, I, I just, I know um, there's a lot of centralized entities getting into this stuff, how much of it is backed um, and by who uh, we just don't know. So I, again, I, I stay away from anything that uh, I'm just not familiar with, you know, I'm very comfortable with DeFi. I'm very comfortable with holding my keys um, and, and maybe some of these platforms or, or currencies have that as well. Um, I, I'm just in a, in a good place. Um, so I, I don't explore out too much and take many risks. I'm not too worried about a 3X really um, at this point right. because, I, because I know what's coming. Um, you know, and I, I really think <laughs> I, I really think pulse chain, um, is going to set off our bull market for us once this stuff starts to launch. I think this will be the early bull market into, you know, the rest of the markets. I think it'll kind of flow in nicely. Um, I, I just don't think, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, I just don't think we're there yet. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm just not messing around with that stuff. I, I, I'm concerned on focusing on, you know, what I'm interested in and, um, what I think is going to have the most most returns for our dollars. Uh, Australian in the chat looks like he actually may be into that stuff. He says, you minions live in an echo chamber. If Hex went away tomorrow, it would not change anything except your bags. Um, yeah. Okay, so maybe he's an Aptos guy. I'm not real sure. Well, I'm um, not sure what he is, but you know, Bitcoin could go away tomorrow too, and it really wouldn't change anything except for their bags. So yeah, I, you know, it's kind of going to be hard for. I want to touch on this because it's going to be hard yeah. for Hex to go away. Um, I, I've said it many times before that contract is going to keep running whether um, this alien guy likes it or not, and there's <laughs> not a whole lot he can do about it. Uh, there's you know, unless they shut down the Ethereum chain, um, Hex will be here. Um, there are people that are locked up for 15 years um, and just not going anywhere. So I really wish people would just kind of get used to it. And if they don't like it, move on. Kind of like I said, I don't like Aptos or any of those. I I'm not right. putting it down. I just, I'm not interested in it. So I don't talk about it. <laughs> 
So, well, I am putting it down, it. and yeah, the, the, basically, what I, I guess I was trying to lead you to say is that all that m most of that stuff is all VC backed stuff, which you know, and I'm not in a vacuum criticizing VC backed stuff or anything like that, but all these people, like especially Arbitrum right now, they're all in on you know, likely some kind of backdoor deal that already happened. They they got in at a price, you know, it, the token hasn't even dropped yet in Arbitrum's case. So like all these influencers, obviously, that, oh, oh, that's part of my portfolio. Yeah. I mean, no shit it is because you got in, you know, on the ground floor before anybody else when, you know, nobody was able to do that before. So that that's right. going to be the big thing to stay away from. It's like, and I know maybe to most of the people other than Australian that are watching us right now, they understand that when you go to these big influencer channels and you guys know who they are, if you've been around crypto for even six months. That does that's not the stuff that you should be interested in. Like likely if they're talking about it or it's in their portfolio, most of the gains have evaporated. And who are we kidding? It's still crypto. I mean, it's probably gonna do well, you know, sure. compared to legacy finance. But you know, just keep in mind there's the, the best stuff, and I think this goes for any walk of life, is not the easiest stuff to get. You know, the, the, the especially in crypto, the, the largest gains that we can still have lie in the things that are tougher to get and right. still have people like Australian, you know, shit talking them and stuff like that. And and you have to have balls to actually participate in this market, unlike some people. So, I mean, yeah. that's just kind of the way it is. So, yep. um, yeah, yep. but I uh, agree. I agree. So. If it's easy to get, you know, you, you hit it on the head. You know, if it's easy to get and if your favorite influencer is talking about the top five cryptos this week, um, like I said, you probably want to stay away from it anyway. Um, find find the one that's find the ones that are like you said a little tougher to get, a little harder to obtain. Eventually, they'll become mainstream enough where that won't be the case, um, and you'll probably wish that you had got it when it was a little more difficult. Yeah. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. But, uh, you know, it, it is a thing, though. Like, I mean, more focusing on people that will be coming into this market over the next couple of years. Yeah, just keep that in mind. I mean, like, you really have to monitor the content that you are consuming and, and just know that, like, in crypto, this market moves so freaking fast that you do want to make sure that you are really doing a lot of research you know, looking for different people to follow that are actually sincere and understanding what are the actual good products, you know, in this market. So, um, yeah, amen on uh, your friend Sami. Yeah, th there you yeah. go. Australian, no hate, uh, no hate. Follow your friend Sami. Um, if you want um, to get some fluffy socks on and mm -hmm. uh, have a friend, um, yeah, go he's follow your, your friend Sami. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's your, your guy. guy. Yeah, all, all love from your friend Sami. So um, those are kind of the things to not be participating in. So let's turn our attention to the stuff that we actually have some interest in. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the content, hit the like. We very much appreciate it. Um, yeah, let's talk about RH. Let's talk about Richard Hart now. He's been on Twitter here over the, the last few weeks. I guess the first kind of basic thing to mention is everybody up to the bankless boys that are on our thumbnail tonight, as well as the altcoin daily boys. Um, they, they're tweeting about him and, hey, you know, what do you think about this Richard Hart branding change and stuff like that? Um, so I'll, I'll, you're the you're the resident expert here, Ewok. So I would let you talk about that. Like, is it how conscious is all of this? How much of it is literally just a quote unquote branding change? Um, and what do you think has kind of been part of the evolution of Richard to come from the well, we really if you knew what was going on, knew wasn't really him with all the right. uh, behavior in 2022 and stuff to now, what, what do you think is happening? Why now? Why the uh, change of pace here? Well, I think Pulse Chain has a lot to do with it. He's, you know, he, he got to 300,000 followers on Twitter, I think was reason number one. Um, so he did hit his 300,000. He, he never enjoyed it. He, he did not enjoy going out, blowing money. He's kind of a, a cheap, person he, you know he's self-admitted i don't like spending money um especially on stuff like that uh now he is usually pretty smart about it and buys things that do appreciate in value uh, he doesn't just go blow money on on things that aren't aren't valuable uh but um i think he's preparing for the pulse chain launch um he did delete his uh deactivated his instagram account 
which was all the flexing of all the the stuff you, you know the 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 Louis Vuitton and the Gucci and the Prada and all of that stuff was that's basically what the Instagram account was for um, and every let's face it i mean most instagram accounts you know, that's kind of what that right. happens it, yeah. it's all yeah it's all just attention grabbing stuff and that was what he was trying to do he was just trying to get his name out there um nothing more than that uh, i see you, you know roland says richard hart is under fire i, I don't think so um I, I just i think he he knows it's time to pivot um, because he did say, when it's time to stop doing that, I'll stop doing that. And now's the time. He's preparing for Pulse Chain to launch. And um, back to serious work. Um, it's just, you know, I, I don't see any point in it. You know, the community started to kind of get fed up with it as well. Um, and I, I think he took that to heart, um, literally. So, yeah. um, I, you know... Again, I don't think he's under fire. I just th I think he realizes that it's just time to pivot, time to get serious about Paul's chain and and, and get you know get on with it. So I think mm -hmm. it served its purpose. Yeah, and you know we've talked about this in recent weeks too. But I think um you know maybe he underrated before, or didn't realize just how uh, important it was to a lot of the hex community just to get the updates about Paul's chain. I mean, like, even if it's stuff that you don't understand at all, which for most right. people it's not, let's face it, but you know, just to see the specific updates from devs and then be able to put, you know, handicap it in some way to put some kind of a time on it, at least to like V3 test net and, you know, the actual thing launching. Um, it's been really valuable, you know, and I think it has shown, um, I guess it's been a pivot for him in that way too, because he would be, he would just figure that there was no news to really talk about. So he wouldn't talk about it. And I wonder how much of it was really, you know, the ETH merge last year uh, in September and, you know, that kind of throwing, not a wrench into things, but changing some things up over the last six months. So yeah, maybe they really had challenges here up until the new year. You know, that, that might be part of it too. That said, I also think, We've always thought this, that there's going to be some market timing for, you know, when this, when Pulse Chain does launch, because you obviously want the wind in your sails too, as far as the greater crypto market. Yep, I agree. And I do think they ran into challenges. You know, he was kind of uh, quiet about it, but he would kind of throw it in there a little bit with how many bugs they were, you know, running into with the whole BSC chain. Um, and how many of them that they actually disclosed to, to those guys themselves <laughs> so that they could fix them. Uh, so, yeah, I think the ETH merge was good timing. I, I think it, you know, made their job probably that much easier um, to pivot. It just made sense to do it. Um, so, you know, and, and now you see the final updates here of where we're, we're sinking and, Mm -hmm. um and getting get getting very close you know crypto ran <clears throat> um was going to have him or tried to have him on his show yesterday or today i forget what day it was i didn't realize um, that and he said he couldn't but he would soon and that the you know he told him that pulse chain v3 launch was imminent so uh so huh. I, I think that's why he couldn't do it they're they're trying to get it squared away um you know all the all the t's crossed and i's dotted and and uh lowercase and, j's yeah yeah all those too so yeah you know yeah Go ahead. i i just think you know that it's gonna it's time to get serious that's basically what it is and um it, you know with uh i, I just kind of wanted to touch on this too the the timing may be suspicious you know we had the SEC already investigating some of the uh, influencers or influencers, the the personalities of, of Hex. And, you know, they've they've found nothing. So, you know, and I don't know right when SEC is looking at DeFi projects and calling everything but Bitcoin a security. Um, and, and, but you still have Gary Gensler saying, not your keys, not your crypto. So they're kind of talking yeah. in circles too. There's a whole lot of just, um stuff they throw at a wall and see what sticks but you know if you think you got a tap on the shoulder then continue to think that um but 
really done nothing wrong. So I, I think not, he I'm may have. No, he, I don't. He I may don't. have. He may yeah. have. <clears throat> and it could be one of the reasons why his his um, uh, Twitter was changed to I don't read messages. I don't answer yeah. emails or, you know, who knows what they sent him. You, you know, we all, we do know that there was a, uh, a the subpoena was sent to CZ um, about the whole coin market cap thing uh, via Twitter. Maybe they tried to send him something or whatever uh, because he is pretty good with his OPSEC. You know, I doubt they have his address. So, yeah, you know, who knows? But either way, I, I, I'm not concerned about it. It's a it's a it's a decentralized product um, that he doesn't really have anything to do with anymore other than marketing it. So not worried about Hex if they're looking into Pulse Chain and the way the sacrifices were run. Um, then maybe that's another reason to get them launched too, to make people realize that <laughs> your money wasn't stolen, people. It's still sitting in those in those um, you know addresses. So we'll see. And you know, getting a getting a tap on the shoulder or whatever from the SEC, or you know, just uh, kind of like what some of the the hex folks apparently got in the mail. You know, it doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean very much. No, you know, and that you know, and not just for hex, but for any anything that they they put a question into they they want to get their hands on everything and they want to find out whatever they can about everything you know and the the definition of a security and this is something i was going to ask you about ewok too because richard was tweeting all about this one of the last few days too um is purposely a broad definition by the sec so they can basically call whatever they want a security like they sure. purposely leave themselves all kind of wiggle room they're not dumb oh know, yeah to to be able to do that. So um, I think that's both good and bad because it's kind of like, you know, just because you get a question or somebody might be looking into you, that doesn't mean anything is going to come out of it necessarily. Nope. Like it's just them being able to put their fingers on everything. You know? Sure. Yeah. And they make their, their wording. So um, just, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is, but they make it so vague that, um, ambiguous. Can, ambiguous, yes. Yeah. So that they can spin it how they want to, or when it's time to to change the language, all they have to do is change one word, mm -hmm. and people don't even really realize it. So, you know, it, it's going to be a long, hard fight, I think, with these people. Uh, they really don't know what they're doing. They don't know much about crypto anyway. Yeah. Um, so educating them and, and getting some senators and and you know people to represent us is probably going to be the best way to go about fighting this i think yeah um yeah I, I am with you there i had i wanted to say this too uh back to the richard and like what he's um how he's rebranded himself and how like his twitter bio reads and stuff like that you know i i mentioned it earlier i do find reddit to be a valuable source, the Reddit cryptocurrency um, subreddit, uh, to be valuable as basically a you know system to fade. Just everything that's going on in there, do the opposite. Basically, you'll probably be okay. It's kind of like the inverse Kramer, but um, you know if you would go in there right now, you'll basically see that everything is a bloodbath and the recession looms and uh, get out while you can and all these things. And there lately has been a Richard Hart or Hex related post almost daily in there that gets to the top of the subreddit, which is kind of significant because it's a big subreddit. But they are saying like, oh yeah, did you see he scrubbed everything about Hex from his bio and he, you know, deleted this right before he runs off with everybody's money. And it's like, there, number one, he didn't. I mean, you were just looking at his bio prior to us going on the air and it's there. But he didn't even really have tons of hex centric stuff in there to begin with. He's also like, we've just said, been tweeting constantly yeah. about the progress of his brand new L one that people are waiting with bated breath for. So yeah. I just don't, you know, it, I, I, I guess my point with that is Reddit, although it may be good for some things, I, I, I actually think it is good for this. Go to the cryptocurrency subreddit, the full word cryptocurrency and use it as a resource to fade what they do because they um, are all basically, you know, clutching their pearls. That just, you know, it's it's a good place to go to to get a dose of like where 
the normies are kind of looking in crypto i think so yeah like i said i stay away from it i think it's toxic i i just I, yeah I, it is. I, I don't need i i mean yeah i don't need to go see what other people are saying i i see it in twitter enough where um mm-hmm. you know it just gives me more motivation to to block and and mute people so that's fun yeah yeah. Yeah. It was fun the other day too. I don't know what it was. And I saw, I forget who from Hex on Twitter uh, from the community said this, but uh, um, there were multiple people on, I think Monday, I don't even know what accounts they were, just whoever, but just with like um, the whole, well, you know, it's, it's a Ponzi, but you know, it's a kind of Ponzi where, and it's just like, dude, this is so tired at this point. Uh, it was Simon Dixon. He was one of them. I, yeah. The other one was the one I read more of. I forget who it was, but it was just like, come on, dude. Like he literally contradicted himself all within right. the same thread. I mean, most of these people are 100%. I'll say it myself. I know now as a quote unquote content creator, even though it's a small YouTube channel, anytime you put something out about Hex, you will at least 3X the attention you get from yeah. anything else you ever cover. Sure. That is good for Hex. I don't know why people do not understand that, but it's like, that's the network effect, man. Like it isn't taking place anywhere else in crypto right now. Yeah. And, uh, d- you know, it, these Bob Lucas has been guilty of it for Christ's sake. Yeah. I mean, he will tweet about Hex every now and then. So Why? They all do. They all do. You know, you've got these guys, especially Altcoin Daily. They talk about it all the time. And that you know they don't like it, but they get, they get the responses and the retweets and the and the comments and it's just you know it it it's all it's all for the um it's all for the clicks that's it's all clickbait so yeah 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 it definitely is and um yeah you can you can really see just in the numbers i mean you start doing anything about hex and that'll happen I, yeah go ahead and answer this because I, I, I wanted to uh, get into that yeah, so I don't know. I, I mean, I think... Well, let's stay. If you could state it just for the people that are just listening, maybe later. Yeah, it says, do you foresee sites like CoinMarketCap and exchanges gatekeeping Pulse Chain as they are doing with Hex? I don't think so. Um, I don't think as much because I do believe there are several exchanges that are going to list it fairly, you know, right away. Um and there's a lot less to it. It's not as confusing. It's just a layer two uh, or a layer. It's just another layer one. It's a fork of Ethereum. People just understand it more. Um, and I don't think we'll get the the gatekeeping that has happened with Hex um, for for several reasons. Um, you know, you're again, you're going to be able to get it more places. Um yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it being an issue. We'll see. We'll see if they, you know, if they do, then we we know that they're really just anti Richard Hart, and it's not, you know, it's not just Hex. It's him. So I, right. I think that'll be the 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 telltale sign is um, how quickly these things show up. Now, because of the very large market cap, um, I do see some gatekeeping in the sense of um how they list how many coins there are for circulation purposes um i i don't see them including the full number uh because it could easily start overtaking some popular coins and they may not want that so you know that'll be an interesting right. scenario to kind of keep an eye on um as to how many they say circulating coins are based on the, the full supply we'll have to see I think that will definitely be interesting. And yeah, they definitely don't like Richard Hart. But like you just said, Ewok, it is a layer one. And it's something that they're more familiar with. It's not just a DeFi. uh, I almost said the S word. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But a DeFi mining smurfing protocol. It's not just that. It's it's an actual layer one. So um, yeah, I have the amount of attention it's going to get in things like that. Yeah, I, I, I do think it will be listed on there, which will be insane and very, very cool. So um we will see that. Uh, before we get into the thing I just mentioned, what did you make of his specific Pulse Chain updates from Monday? Um, <laughs> you DM'd me, and I 100% thought the same thing as you. The way his tweet started, I thought it was the announcement for V3. It almost, oh, yeah. it, 
the way it was constructed, <clears throat> everything about it looked like it. He, I, I'm guessing he probably wanted people to think that maybe. Probably. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, what did you make of those? And then also, I was going to mention this a minute ago, and I forgot. I think Hexo might have tweeted this. But just that there was even a slight minor change on the uh, testnet site. Now, it was still all of the details, and it was for the V2B or whatever. It was still that you know, the RPL or whatever and all that stuff. But sure. they look like they're gearing up the landing page for a change. There was multiple yeah. changes made. So yep. what did yeah, you make so of these updates and stuff? Pulse chain, the so pulsechain.com was was changed. It was updated. Um, you're right. It still has the uh, V2B, RPC, all the settings um, in, in it. But um, they changed the wording. I forget who it was, but yeah, Hexo might have posted the screenshot of what it was before, what it was after. Slight changes, but yes, just getting ready um, for it. As far as the updates go, um, I, I think they were very bullish. Um, There's a couple things that Richard mentioned, um, and one of them was the Aragon code that was giving them the, the problem before. Um, I don't know if a lot of people caught this or not, but the guys from Aragon actually released an update to their software because he said um, we had to roll it back to the previous version that didn't have that bug. And if you, I'm going to share this here. <clears throat> Oop, I need to sh actually share it. Um, these are all the updates that the last Aragon update released. Um, so I'm not sure. This is the change log of two days ago uh, for the Aragon um, code. And if you notice how many of these changes or updates or fixes that they released, um, and I just wonder how many of these that, you know, Richard's devs actually found or came across uh, but there's over 600 changes to this last update. So yeah. uh, that allowed them to resync everything um, using Aragon. Um, let's go to the, let's go to the, here it is. Yep, Aragon released a bug fix. So that, you know, allowed them to get through uh, the execution stage uh where it was getting hung up before so that's a good thing um you know he lists here the all the release notes that we just saw so yeah it looks like it's um it's it got past that place where they were having the issue before right. um you know we have 10 second block time which is 20 percent faster than um, ethereum is running at 12 cents or 12 seconds um and yeah, so I mean, just a lot of good information. I think we've got, um, as of yesterday, I think there were still maybe 10 to 15 hours of sync time on, on the updates that he had listed. Um, I don't remember where those were. Um, in yeah, the it seemed thread. like it was over halfway through syncing or so from, yeah. from what I read, right? Yeah, there were different stages, and um, I think stage 8, stage 9, stage 10 were pretty um, intensive. Um, I, I wish I could find it easily, but I don't know where it was, so I'm not even going to I'm not even going to um, go there. Okay. <laughs> but either way, either way. Um, I, we probably have another day or so left of, of the stages that he had listed. Right. Um, and, and then it could potentially, you know, I, I think probably by the weekend we should hear something or get a, a more clear update from him the way he's been updating at least, um, and, and keeping people, you know, abreast of what's going on. Uh, I, I think we should probably know something or see something by this weekend. I think so too. Yeah. With the regularity that he's been updating um, and the fact that there has been a lot of stuff on weekends too. Yeah. I think we're probably going to get something. So um, I have alerts turned on for him now. Cause I think it just, you have that feel, you know, I'm sure mm -hmm. you always have his alerts on Ewok, but yeah, it's just, I'm getting that feel that the things are really close here. So, um, you know, just want to catch everything that comes up, but, um, 
Before we get out of here, I do want to tackle this last thing that he was talking about. And if you guys are here and enjoying the stream, hit the like. We very much appreciate it. The renaming of the term staking. Okay, so he, he's talked about that recently. And um, yeah, I'm sure, you know, there's no secret really here. I think it's likely because of the way that, you know, whispers he's been hearing, <clears throat> maybe not even whispers, maybe just flat out screams um, that the SEC uh, is coming after like that term and that idea. And it's not like it's just Hex has used that. That's something that's been used amongst all DeFi protocols. It's been used against CeFi protocols. Um, and they're the ones that have actually taken people's money. Right. So, you know, staking your Ethereum, staking whatever on a CeFi, like a Celsius or even like a Kraken, which you're no longer allowed to do uh, in the United States. But you know, so that's not like a, a unique term to hex by any remote stretch of the imagination. But I like where he's going with this to try to rebrand it and get ahead of some of the crap that the um, SEC is really going to be honing in on over the next few years with regulation in crypto. So um, what do you make of it? What do you think? I, I don't really care what it's called. I think it's kind of a silly thing to, to talk about, I guess. But, you know, for branding, which Hex is big on, and it's part of the reason it does so well. I mean, for Christ's sake, the name of that documentary was going to be the highest of stakes. I don't right. know if that's still the case or what. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what do you make of that? I mean, how important of a thing do you think this is? What is it? What is maybe an accurate term to call it for what the action is you're actually doing? Because Richard is right. I mean, it is you interacting with a contract. You're not getting paid by somebody else or anything. You've right. chosen to lock up tokens for X amount of time, which you are printing this reward for yourself because you've decided to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I, I think a couple things. I think the word staking is starting to confuse people um, because mm -hmm. of the regulatory actions that were taken against the CFI stakers. So it could lead maybe some bad um, information or confusing information for people that are trying to onboard uh, when we would say staking, for example. Um, and then, you know, they hear, well, I heard they're really cracking down on staking. So better not do that. So I, I think it's more that than anything, um, just to compare it to mining. Um, he has always compared it to mining Bitcoin. Um, and it really is more of a virtual miner. Um, it, it, it explains it better than um, I think staking does only because of, of how the contract works. You know, you do mint your inflation. Um, and that's what miners do is, you know, they they perform code and it, you know, it, it mints inflation and that's how it, um, that's how it's brought into existence. So I think that is more accurate um, and then it was changed again. So now, now we're not mining, we're actually publishing or we're smurfing or whatever we're doing. I don't think it really matters, um, but we need to figure something out and be consistent with it. Um, you, you know, you've got all these people and I have a couple myself that say stake hex and do this or whatever. Um, I think the hex.com site was fixed but the go.hex.com was not. That's so, what Pip just said in the chat, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see. It says go go hex. Um, still says stake. So I, I don't know. And I really don't think it's important. It's semantics at this point. Um, but again, we need to all be consistent, I think, is you know where we need to go with it um, and, and just call it whatever. Whatever we're going to call it, we all need to be on the same page. Um, and he hasn't been overly clear uh, with that. Maybe he doesn't want to decide. Maybe he wants to let the community decide um, what kind of sticks, what works best. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I, I think it, I, again, I, I think it was more about the regulations that are happening with the CFI staking uh, that he didn't want to be included into the discussions of that and just be lumped in. You know, all staking yeah. now is bad. Well, that's not really the case because DeFi staking is fine. Um, you know, you have all these even old QT wallets 
um, that have staking that still work and it that's how you get paid to 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 hold the nodes you know a lot of a lot of cryptocurrencies kind of started that way i remember you know whether they had master nodes or single nodes but they were stakers so i don't know um I, again I, th I think it's more just to stay out of the crosshairs as much as possible um right why 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 draw attention if you don't need it if they're already coming down on staking change the term it's fine yeah. Yeah. I think it's clearly to get ahead of these things. And I would want to depart myself from it too. I mean, like, even though it's mainly CFI that have gotten everybody in trouble and taken everybody's money over the last couple of years, you know, really, if you've lost it in DeFi for the most part, it's probably something that you did wrong, you know, or just, uh, yeah. you know, getting involved with the wrong kinds of things that you didn't see the writing on the wall. But yeah, I would want to separate myself from the term as much as possible if they're going to, um, be like that about it. And I do think mining makes a lot of sense. I mean, that it's pretty much, you know, that's what kind of hex was is like the better version of Bitcoin and mining the tokens without having, you know, a rig in your home and wasting all this electricity and stuff like that and, and being proof of mine. I don't know. Um, but, you know, yeah, so I, I think that's an interesting word for it, although I don't think they like miners either. They, do, they don't like anybody. So what do no, you they do? don't. I don't um, know that you can win. Right. Yeah, I don't I don't know either as far as uh, words on a paper. But, yeah, I, I do understand why he's doing it. We'll kind of see how it progresses. I do think it benefits them as much as I don't care what it's called either. Um, I do think it benefits him and Hex and, you know, probably other DeFi protocols, too to come up with an agreed upon thing to somehow separate yourself from whatever idea the SEC has, you know, I, I think that that is kind of important. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of where we head off on that, but, uh, this has been a jam packed episode. We talk about a lot here. March is an interesting month. It's going to be, I think volatile, like you said to Ewok over the next three weeks here. Um, we've, got a lot of stuff coming up this spring that's going to be interesting but you know to me it's a weird time in the market right now i mean i think a lot of people probably feel like there's some bluer skies than there have been because 2022 was pure hell on earth we're certainly not there anymore but now you know that we've had a good taste of some nice moves the last couple of months and now we're kind of seeing some red here and there and then we're seeing jerome powell's face again and everything i think people may be having some ptsd a little bit um, for 2022, but, uh, you know, it, it's tough. I mean, nobody said this was going to be easy. I mean, portfolios are likely still mostly way down across the yep. board and you just got to stick it out. Some days really sucks. You know, I, I've even had some days myself recently too, where it's like uh, psychologically not doing as good as you feel like you could have been and just trying to get through it and just realizing what an important factor time is in this whole equation, you know, and, trying to do more every single day, trying to get more money into the market, trying to work and build up more dry powder, which, you know, everybody should be doing. Don't, don't rest on your laurels. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just have to say like, you know, I'm also a little bit of a leaf blowing in the wind with where this market is going. And I have to just kind of wait, you know, that's, that's one thing we all have in common with that. So yeah. time is the, the best, best thing we have going for us. And, you know, we've, yeah. we've said it from the beginning, um, as long as you have a long time horizon, you know, this is not get rich quick. <clears throat> it's it's get rich slow. <laughs> and it does take, you know, patience and consistency. Um, you know, you can't just pop in and out and, and think you're going to pick the right day. You know, you have to be consistent about finding it and, um, you know, getting through those those mental struggles it is hard, especially it does wear on you um over time it's it it is you know it, it is difficult and it, it it's you you got to get away from it though too sometimes too is take a break and and walk yeah. outside and uh go do things that get your mind off of it um so that you can come back refreshed and uh ready to dive back in so i agree with you i think that's really really important and uh yeah, you have to just get away from it and totally focus on something else and, you know, try to be productive too. I mean, try to, like we've talked about so many times, try to build something in these times, whatever yeah. that 
maybe for you, whatever skills you have in the meantime. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you're still here before you get out of here, hit the like. If you enjoy what you saw here and want to hear more of it every Wednesday, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I'm Broke Boy Crypto. That is Crypto Ewok. He is at Crypto Ewok 5555. And uh, yeah, follow us both. We uh, join each other here every single Wednesday night, talk a lot of DeFi and the greater crypto space. Um, any final parting thoughts at all from you tonight, Ewok? No, man. Um, that's about it. I just, uh, you know, hopefully by weekend we've we've got some news and we'll have an exciting show next week to uh, give us yep. some stuff to talk about. Yeah, we will have CPI by this time next week. So that could either be a nothing burger or uh, yeah, a something burger. I don't yeah. know what kind, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll find out. We'll be having burgers. Of, yeah, we'll find out what kind of sandwich we're biting out of there. But uh, should be interesting. That'll be next week, the 15th of March, halfway through March already. And yeah, we will catch you guys then right here on the Creed of Crypto Podcast. We'll be